It looks good. Actually, uh, in the first quarter, I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, we had Easter in the last week of March compared to last year where Easter was in April. So it means that our first quarter numbers in general for the whole country was actually a little bit understated. Mm -hmm. um, things are looking good so far. The elections uh, went pretty well um, and it looks like a lot of confidence in the country is coming back. I've been meeting with a lot of investors, both domestic and foreign, and there is a lot of optimism and belief that growth in the Philippines will still continue. Well, it looks like given the fact that you're in the oleochemicals and the food industry, the 6.2% projected consumption growth is driving that rising tide higher. Um, you know, that also means, you know, good dividends as well and earnings for your, for, for your, your shareholders. And since 2012, you've actually had your IPO. You're looking at 3.22 billion pesos in cash dividends. Is there a, the same rate this year or what, what's the outlook for your shareholders in terms of dividend this year? So we have paid a total of uh, 1.43 billion or we will be paying 1.43 billion this year. Um, as long as our cash flow is good and profitability is good, um, we will likely continue to pay uh, good dividends for our shareholders. Um, it's something that we really believe in. Um, our cash, our debt levels are quite low at the moment, um, and we don't believe in holding too much cash at the corporate level. Rather, we would release them to the shareholders for them to decide what to do with it. Well, you've won a few corporate governance awards. So it seems like it's all in place. You have a former Ayala executive also That's right. on your board right now. You well, there you go. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about industry strategy though, mm -hmm. because that's gonna that everything rests upon that. Mm -hmm. You've gotten into joint ventures and at the same time acquisitions with right. cameras and the acquisitions in Ventura yes. in terms of joint ventures. Yes. What are you looking at in terms of a forward path? Is that the same balance that you're looking at? Well, um, as a company, we try as much as possible to reach out to as many customers as we can. But honestly, um, as a Philippine company, it is very challenging to meet and work with a lot of very large multinational companies. By working with these uh, large companies like Ventura and others, it's much easier for us to reach other markets uh, that would be very difficult for us. So that's one thing that we're looking at doing. Um, we are continuously talking to a lot of companies, looking at what products we can do, uh, new markets that we can tap into. But uh, it's a process that will take time. But I think over time, you will see more of this. Well, you're certainly looking at an upside because of the Asia-Pacific integration, especially with ASEAN yes. coming in. Yes. One thing I wanted to cite to our audience also is the fact that you're upscaling in terms of value-added mm -hmm. services and also your manufacturing getting more domestic value-added. Mm -hmm. Can you talk more about that in light of the fact that the Philippines still has one of the lowest domestic value-added components in the industry, especially versus China? Yes. Um, actually, one thing that we look at is the per capita spend on many of the products that we make. So everything from chemicals, uh, plastics, uh, food ingredients, even aerosol. The per capita spend in the Philippines is still quite low. And we believe with per capita GDP going up, not just in the Philippines, but across Southeast Asia, it means the per capita spend will also go up. So it's really a function of disposable income continuing to increase. It means people can afford to buy more of these non-essential items. And so that's very bullish for growth for many industries, including ours. So you look at margins, but can we also talk about R&D and R&D mm -hmm. investment in terms of your personnel and yes. technology? Talk about your forward plans for that component of your business. So 12% of our staff are involved in R&D. That's about 200 people out of a total workforce of 1,600 people. So we are probably one of the largest R&D centers in the Philippines outside of the academe. Um, we invest a lot in R&D, particularly, particularly in developing a lot of customized specialty products for our clients. So together with the attention to what our customers need that goes hand in hand, um, that is something that we have invest, continued to invest a lot in. Last year, R&D expense actually increased by 39%. So it shows how we are really tapping into this growing market because as disposable income is going up, people want different things, more new things. This is something that we're really well positioned to help our customers do. Well, certainly a formidable foundation going forward. Alvin, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Kintin.